yours. That's what I'm holding right now. And boy oh boy, do I have some hacks for you using these rulers that you are not gonna wanna miss. I can't wait to show you the hacks that I have in store for you using wood rulers. So I'm gonna quit my gabbing, let's jump into it, and let's do some DIY hacking on a budget. DIY hacking? Is that a thing, DIY hacking? I just kind of made that up right now. Let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. There are a couple different places you can get wood rulers. One place being the 99 cent store. If you have a 99 cent store in your area, you're going to get four of these rulers for a dollar, which I think is a great buy. The 99 cent rulers have holes in them. One side's got two holes, the other side has one. We need the side of the ruler that has one hole to have two. So I'm gonna place another ruler on top with the side of the ruler that has the two holes so that way I can get the holes in the same spot on each ruler. Each ruler needs to have the exact amount of holes if that makes any sense on both ends of the ruler. I'm always looking for a good excuse to use my new power tools and well, this DIY calls for it. Take in a drill bit. I don't know what size drill bit this is. I really just picked one that was close enough in size to the existing holes on the rulers. I'm gonna drill a hole where I placed the dot, the dot that I traced with the ruler on top of it. And I'm gonna do this to six of the wood rulers. Now these wood rulers are not a great quality wood. I wanna say that they are probably the lowest grade pine that you can get. So if you have some splinters, you are gonna to wanna to take some sandpaper and smooth out those holes. Again, you should have two holes on each end of the ruler, of uh, all six rulers. I don't want these rulers to look new. Oh no, no, I want them to look aged and distressed. And so to achieve that look, I'm gonna go with some of Minwax's Early American Stain. This may be my new favorite color stain. It's one that I have in my stash, so it is gonna work perfect for this DIY. Well, for all seven of these DIYs. These hooks here, well, you can find them at Dollar Tree. You're gonna need three packs of them, which is six hooks. You're also gonna need some of these screws and bolts. This is a 10 pack that you can get at Walmart for 97 cents. Now this is the size here that I got. I'm gonna take the hooks. I'm gonna take my screws and bolts and using the holes that are in the ruler, I am going to attach these hooks to the ruler just like so. And you can kind of see how I kind of made a V angled my rulers together. You see where I'm going with this. Once I've got these hooks good or hook, Good and on here, I'm gonna move down the row because we've got four more rulers. And so to the bottom of this ruler here, I'm gonna add another ruler going at the opposite direction, which is kind of like that chevron look, kind of a zigzag. And to each ruler where I attach them together, I am going to place a hook. You will need a total of five hooks or however many hooks you need, depending on how many rulers you add to this piece. This is a versatile piece, so you can add as many or as little rulers as you want, and you're gonna get creative and make it your own. I am already loving the way this looks because this is gonna be a coat hook, or in my case, a towel hook. Oh my word, I absolutely love this piece. It is so budget friendly with an outcome that is so rustic, I can hardly stand it. For this next ruler hack, I'm gonna start off with 11 Jenga blocks. I'm gonna glue four of them together. Then I'm gonna frame these four blocks with more Jenga blocks. Only these blocks will be standing up. That 11th Jenga block, I'm gonna place some glue right there on the edge, the corner edge, and I'm gonna place a bit of glue on the edge of what was the frame, and I'm gonna set this block at an angle just like you see me doing here. This is a ruler hack, Kelly, so when do the rulers come in? Right now. 
I'm gonna take two pieces that I cut at four and a half inches. How did I cut these rulers? You can do it a couple of ways. I used my miter saw. Dollar Tree's got a couple of hand saws that will saw right through this. Creative on the cheap, she's pretty genius. She uses some miter cutters that look amazing, not gonna lie. Have some on order on Amazon coming today, which I can't wait to use. I'm gonna glue one of the four and a half inch piece rulers, one of the four and a half, one of the ruler pieces that measures out at four and a half inches on the front. And this here is the back. When I place the second one, I'm gonna place it at the halfway mark of the ruler because I want the back side of this piece to be higher, elevated than the front part. So that way when you hold it up, you can see the back of that ruler nicely. And what is this? Yes, this is a business card holder. How cute is that? Oh my word, I love this piece. This would make such a fun teacher appreciation gift to give, especially after you put a little bit of that early American stain on it. How fun is that? Easy, quick, and budget friendly. For this ruler hack, we're gonna need 12 rulers that measure out at 10 inches. That's cutting two inches off, but you're gonna save those pieces. I'm gonna take four of the 12 and I'm gonna glue two of them together just simply using some jumbo popsicle sticks. Taking four of those two inch pieces, I'm gonna glue two of them together or two sets of two together using again, popsicle sticks. And the glue that I'm using is a wood glue by Super Glue. This glue is amazing. You can find this in the tool section of Dollar Tree, not the craft section, and I highly recommend it. Once I've got my four pieces glued together, I'm gonna take the two inch pieces and right along that edge there, I'm gonna place just a bit of the glue. Be careful when placing this. You don't wanna put too much glue on it because when placing the glue, if you're gonna stain wood, if the glue gets on the wood, even if you sand it, it tends not to absorb the wood very easily. And so, yeah, it's best just to less is more in this case. And this is what you wanna be left with when you glue your pieces together. What am I making? I'm making a tissue holder out of wood rulers. Oh my word, wait until you see how rustic and amazing this looks. Now we have a total of eight 10 inch rulers left. We're gonna take four of them and glue them together just like you see me doing here. Again, using the popsicle sticks. When you place the popsicle sticks, you wanna place them about an inch in from each edge of the ruler because we're gonna add some Jenga blocks to this here in a second to actually put our tissue box together. And so like I said, you're gonna do two sets of four with the last eight 10 inch rulers that we have. When placing the Jenga blocks, you wanna place two on the sides here and you wanna make them as even with the edges of the ruler as you can get them because this is just going to help ensure when we put our tissue box together that it fits together nicely. And so with the four rulers, you should be able to fit two on each side and then I'm gonna place three there in the center in between the popsicle sticks. And I'm gonna do that to both sets of, I guess, the four rulers that were glued together. And like they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. This is what you should be left with. Two pieces that look like this and this is gonna be the long side of the, I guess, rectangular tissue box holders. Now you're also going to need to cut eight pieces that measure out at four and a half to five inches, depending on what size box you wanna use. I went with a five inch uh, measurement and I'm gonna, again, glue four of those rulers together, just like you see me here. And you're gonna need two sets of four glued together. I wanna take a quick second to say, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, well, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose, yes, in the drop down menu of the bell. 
And if you are interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. Now getting back to some DIYing, we need to glue our tissue box together. So this is where the Jenga blocks come into play. You're gonna go ahead and put some of that wood glue on all of your Jenga blocks. And yeah, it's easier said than done here for a second. I had had a bit too much caffeine, but once you get it all lined up and put together, it's going to fit together nicely. Once I did put the top on, I wanted to add just a bit of weight to this piece to really ensure that it stayed together good and tight. And so I went ahead and put one of my craft boxes right on top, set this aside for about an hour just to really let that crazy glue wood glue dry. And with that, after about an hour and a half, I was left with this. Look at this. It's a nice sturdy tissue box holder made out of wood rulers. How rustic and fun is that? Again, this would make for the perfect gift for a teacher or for anybody. Really, this is going to be in my craft room. But it definitely needs some of that early American stain. Would you look at how gorgeous this is? I don't know why I never noticed this color stain until a few months ago. With the name Early American, why did I not pick it up before? This is such a rustic aged brown. I love it. And so yes, this is gonna get a good coating of that. And there we have it. I love this piece. Next up, I'm gonna be using one of these square pen holders from Dollar Tree. And using some of that handy wood glue, I'm gonna go ahead and place a bit on the side here. I took my rulers, cut them into three and a half inch pieces. And I wanna say I did 12 three and a half inch pieces. Using this square uh, pen holder, you can perfectly place three of the rulers on the side and it fits perfectly. And you will be left with this fun piece. Again, here it is without the stain, putting some of those number two pencils in it. Such a cute DIY, easy to do, a great gift to give a teacher or anybody for that matter. But when you add that early American stain, oh my word, it just takes it over the top. It gives it that nice rustic age burnt look. This wood ruler hack is amazing and has such a rustic outcome you're going to take your rulers however many you need it's going to be different for everybody and you're just going to cut them in half at the six inch mark on the back side here i have a couple of dots these dots line up with the holes in my cabinets and the drawers where the handles were so everybody's is going to be different taking some of dollar tree's wood cubes and more of that fun wood glue i'm going to place these wood cubes on to where the dots are. Now I do suggest using a high quality glue like this wood glue by Crazy Glue because it really adheres nicely onto whatever surface it is you're adhering it onto. So in this case, I'm adhering the wood cubes onto the wood rulers and that is just what we need. I'm gonna put those wood cubes on each of the six inch rulers that I cut. And I did show four here, but I ended up only doing two or three, I think, for video purposes only. And to give these more of a rustic feel, these two shall get a nice coating of that early American stain. Now, I will tell you that not all of these hacks are hacks that I am keeping in my home and using. I'm bringing you these hacks because I have an idea, I like them, and maybe somebody somewhere will get use out of them and like them. And so with this handle hack, I am going to put it on my cabinets and show you how they look just so you have the idea. But all in all, this stain color did not go well with, I wanna say I have kind of a maple oak color to my cabinets. And so this color didn't work well. I didn't wanna buy a darker stain just for these handles. And so I was just using what I had in my stash and that I was using for every other DIY. I feel like if somebody's gonna use these, Minwax has so many amazing stain colors to choose from. You're gonna choose one that goes well with your decor style that you like, that's gonna stand out and probably work a bit better with your cabinets than this color actually worked with mine. And there you have it, such a fun rustic piece. And like I said, these would have been gorgeous had I used a darker stain, 
but all in all, I think that these are fun rustic candles that could be added to any drawer or cabinet. This is another fun hack. Again, you're gonna take that 12 inch ruler, you're gonna cut it in half at the six inch mark, and you're gonna need five pieces for this. Using that wood glue by super glue, I'm gonna go ahead and glue these pieces together just like I'm doing here. I'm not even gonna try and explain what I'm doing. If you choose to do this DIY, it's one that you're just gonna have to follow along with me and kind of do and pause as I go to get the outcome that I have. What am I making? I'm making a wood rustic ruler, a wood ruler, wood ruler rustic star. Now you gotta wait because it is gonna get finished when we add just a bit of that early American stain to this to rustic it up a bit. Yep, I know it may seem repetitive and that's because it is. Look at what a difference a little of that early American makes. Now taking some brads, these are a brad that you can get at Dollar Tree. They've got them in gold at Dollar Tree. If you need to rustic them up a bit, just put a bit of paint on them or stain and it'll work. You're gonna wanna cut off the metal tabs and using just a bit of hot glue, if you put some hot glue on each of those points and put the brad right over the hot glue, would you look at how cool that is? Now what is this piece for? I don't know, maybe it's just something you wanna put on a shelf just to add to your rustic decor. So to stand my cool rustic star up, I'm gonna dig into my stash of Dollar Tree's wood cubes, and I'm just gonna hot glue them onto the bottom points here, in turn giving me a cool rustic star that's standing up. A standing up rustic star? Sure, you know what I mean. Let's take a look. This next wood ruler hack, I love it. And it is using those new bamboo rings from Dollar Tree by Crafter Square. You're getting two different sizes. We're gonna start off by taking the smaller side and I'm gonna trace it on a thinner cardboard, chipboard, whatever it is you have in your stash. If you don't have any of that thicker cardboard, use a cereal box, use a cracker box. It's gonna work and just put the outside of the box face down. Then you've got a blank canvas on the inside. Once I've got it good and traced, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out and I'm gonna set this cardboard circle aside for later. A six inch ruler seems to be the running theme for these hacks, but it's the perfect size for this one as well. So on the bottom end of the ruler, I'm gonna place a bit of hot glue. Now when I place this ruler, I'm gonna place it at a slight angle. I don't wanna place it straight up and down so you can see how I angled it there. I did fill that in with a bit of hot glue, but you want just a slight angle, not the up and down. Then I'm gonna take the larger ring and on the side of the ring, I'm gonna go ahead and place the hot glue there just about the width of the ruler. And I'm gonna place that ring about an inch and a half to two inches down from the top of the ruler. Now you're gonna see that there is a gap between the ring and the ruler and you want that. You are gonna go in and fill that in with hot glue, but you're gonna do that in a bit. Once you've got that first ruler placed, you're gonna go ahead on the opposite side and place a second ruler just to keep those rings standing up. Once you've got those first two rulers in place, it's gonna make the rest of this DIY kind of move along a bit smoother. You do wanna kind of shape your, I guess, piece before that glue dries. Once you see that you've got a nice symmetrical shape, you are good to go with moving on with the rest of your rulers. Now, I suggest placing your rulers opposite of each other to get even spacing, and that's kind of what I did. Now that I've got my, I guess, first two, I'm gonna go ahead on this opposite corner here, using the four corners as my guide, and place my third and fourth ruler. Once you've got those four rulers placed at each of the four points, it's so easy from there just to go ahead and place a ruler in the center of each spacing. Then once you've got those four done, you can go in between those spaces and add the last of your rulers. I'm leaving a gap between my rulers because I really just like the look of it. And it was kind of off in size when it came to rulers. I couldn't put an even number amount of rulers around 
without having a gap at the end. And so to avoid that, I just went ahead and kept a small space of about a quarter of an inch between each of the rulers. And with that, I thought that this came out perfectly. I'm gonna go in with my glue gun and on that smaller ring there on the edge, I'm gonna place a fair amount of hot glue. And this is going to be what is going to hold our cardboard disc. Yeah, a round cardboard disc, the bottom of our ruler planter, our decorative ruler planter. Now with this, I'm not gonna put anything heavy in it, but I did wanna close up the bottom areas, but I didn't wanna fill it completely with moss because that is going to take a lot of moss and I didn't want to spend a ton of money on moss. I dug into my stash. After cleaning my garage, I found some of these moss sheets that I have. I have in fact seen them since a Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut down my moss sheet because I don't want it standing above my pot and I'm just going to place it along the sides inside of my pot. My ruler pot, my ruler planter. And then I'm gonna take these amazing new colored daisies that Dollar Tree has. Tell me you have not seen the amazing colors that they now have. I'm a little bit obsessed with these. Okay, really a lot obsessed with them. These purplish pink ones are just gorgeous mixed in with the white. And I thought that it would be the perfect touch of color to go with that early American stain. Let's go take a look. Oh my word, I love this last one. You're gonna need two pieces of that wood ruler that measure out at five inches. That's a whopping 10. You're gonna need to take two of those two inch pieces that you have left in your stash because you didn't throw them away when you cut all those 10 inch piece rulers. We're gonna place just a bit of hot glue on the ends here of those two inch pieces and we're gonna place those two inch pieces right there in between the five inch pieces. And just for an added measure to really keep these pieces good and together, I'm gonna go in with those jumbo popsicle sticks just to reinforce and really keep these pieces, did I say, together, yes. Yep, very repetitious, but I tell you, when you find a stain color you really like, you just gotta kinda stick with it. So these two shall get that early American, in case you didn't know what color I was using. Love, love, love the way these look. Something about that stain with these wood rulers, because it's a low quality wood, when you stain it, it comes out in so many different tones. So I couldn't have asked for it to be aged and distressed any better. Now taking that scrap piece of cardboard that I used for my planter, I'm gonna go ahead and cut a piece that's just a bit smaller than my ruler frames. Yes, these are ruler frames. And that is what I am making or using them for. This is such a fun piece that you could add pictures to. You could add school pictures to, any kind of pictures, decorative pictures that you print up off of Google of sunflowers or any flower. If you wanted to add these to a bathroom or a kitchen, I wanted to use these for Allie's school pictures. I thought that this would be such a fun way to display her school pictures. And so with that, adding this cardboard to the back, just by hot gluing it on three sides of the cardboard so that way I can slide a picture in and out of it, I have then made an adorable rustic wooden ruler frame. I almost forgot what I was gonna say, but because I wanna hang these on my gallery wall, I am gonna add just a bit of twine to the back as well. I made these rustic ruler frames to fit the wallet size school pictures. I know so many of us probably order school pictures and you always have a ton of the wallets left. And so I thought that these would be perfect and I could put more on my wall without using as much space versus using maybe the four by six, five by seven, eight by 10, but you could very easily make those size frames and have the same great outcome for your child's school picture. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? It's going out to Becky Smith, who's bringing to us her recreation of my DIY Dollar Tree Farmhouse Milk Jug. 
Becky, I am loving your recreation and your spin on this piece. Thank you so much for sharing your creation with us today. I hope you all enjoyed these DIY ruler hacks. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes. Because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, well, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please, because I am. Bye for now, everybody.